Well, it's 5.30. And I am very sure that we'll have some more families joining us in a few minutes. But we want to be respectful of everyone's time. So we're going to get started. Uh, a hearty welcome to our first virtual orientation session. And of course, I'm very grateful for all of you for taking the time to join us and um, to share um, what you might have questions about and also give us an opportunity to share some important aspects of campus life with you all. Um, I would like to start today's session with sharing uh, a quick schedule, the, the schedule for, um, um, here we go. Nope, sorry, my bad. Share the schedule for the next seven weeks. Um, please bear with me. Uh, we want to, I wanted to let everyone know that we'll be meeting every Tuesday and Thursday, same time, same link. Um, today we're meeting with leadership. Next week it's health and safety. The following, uh, a week from now, it's core cadets and our leadership program. And then we'll hop into August very quickly. We'll, hop, we'll start August with meal plans and dining services, move on to residential life, and then go to financial aid and any um, outstanding student financial billing questions that you might have. Um, and then we'll go to academic success. And finally, uh, the last session, the most important one uh, is sense of belonging. You'll meet um, content experts from our campus. We're going to give you an idea of um, what all we provide for your cadets outside the classroom so that they feel like they belong at the new campus and have many people and resources that they can utilize. Um, with that, um, this particular schedule is available everywhere. Um, it's been sent to you via email, it's on Facebook, it's on our website. So if you ever need to um, look at it, um, please. I'm gonna mute every all the folks so that um, I can I'll be heard. Um, so this schedule is available. If you ever need anything that you don't see on the schedule or our website, please feel free to uh, write to us at orientation at csum.edu. Um, I also want to take a few minutes before opening it up for our presenters uh, with a quick overview of what August 20th, when you move in your student, is going to look like. Um, your students will be receiving an email of their check-in time, and um, we request that you arrive in time for that uh, check-in. You will arrive on campus and be directed to park in a lot right off the campus. It's called Lot O. After you've parked there, there will be uh, several students and staff that will uh, direct you to our uh, physical education and aquatic center. We call it PIAC. And that's where we will be waiting to greet you and uh, meet with you and meet your students. Uh, after check-in, the students will be provided with a lot a fairly large tote in which they will pick up all their uniforms and uh, be able to take them to, the, to, to their room. While the students are picking up their uniform, we will have a campus services fair for all the families with experts that you might uh, meet uh, over the course of this virtual orientation. So now uh, when you're there in person, you can reconnect or we might have some new people there. Um, to greet you, to answer any last minute questions, to uh, give you all the uh, possible comfort and, and uh, insurance that we're gonna be taking care of your students. Um, after that 30 minute uniform pickup and check-in time, you will be uh, going right back to your car, which was parked in lot O, and you'll drive it to your uh, designated um, res hall. 95% of the students will be going to uh, what we call the upper residence hall. 
And um, so whoever's driving the car uh, will not be able to get out of the car there, um, but you'll have help to unload your materials and belongings. The rest of the people in the car can hop off and go into the res hall and to the room to help set up your student and feel like you've done everything, make a list of anything that you missed, um, do all of that. Before you hop off, agree at a, uh, about a spot where you can meet your driver who's gonna uh, take the car back to lot O. Um, after you've situated your student, you'll probably have some time on your hands uh, to do any last minute errands or grab a bite to eat off campus. Um, and once that is done, uh, we invite you to um, the quad where uh, at two o'clock, which is where you'll have a welcome from the president and um, your student will be practicing to uh, on how to be in formation. And when you come out from the welcome from the president, uh, you will be invited to a capping ceremony with your student. When that concludes, that's the best part of the day, by the way. Um, when that concludes, um, families will be able to leave the campus for um, a dinner, one one meal before you take off, because uh, your student will your student will then Siri wants to participate also. Um, you will be um, bringing your student back by 6.30. Um, their curfew for the day is 6.30 when they return. They have a few things to cover with uh, various departments on campus. Um, during that time, we also will be requesting you to make any exchanges of uniforms that didn't fit. So all of this will be uh, in a program for you when you arrive. It will be uh, shared with the students as well. So uh, if you weren't taking copious notes, that's okay. We'll get this information to you. Uh, a couple more times uh, so you, you know what to expect. But that's kind of what your day is going to look like. You might arrive as early as 7 a.m. That'll be the first check-in time. And definitely uh, you'll be around in the middle of things till 6.30, which is when we take uh, the students uh, over and they will be spending uh, the next several nights on campus and going through a pretty immersive um, orientation program. Um, with that, I would like uh, to uh, cover a little bit of housekeeping for uh, this session and future sessions. Um, please keep your devices on mute while the presenters are um, speaking. Um, we'll open it up for Q&A for topics related uh, with for questions related to today's topic. Um, there are future sessions. So if there, if you have housing questions or dining questions or safety questions, we have future uh, sessions for that and content experts will be available to address those. Um, and then um, at the very end of the q and I will unmute and give anyone an opportunity who couldn't type in because they're driving or for any reason, didn't get a chance to type in their question for Q&A, um, we'll open it up for verbal inquiries. That's everything I have for um, housekeeping. And with that, I'm inviting both our presenters, uh, Provost Schrader and uh, Vice President of Cadet Leadership and Development, Beth Halwig, to um, introduce themselves. And then I have four prepared questions uh, for them that they'll uh, respond to before opening it up to you all. With that, take it away. <laughs> okay, well, I'll jump in and I will introduce myself. I'm Lori Schrader. I'm the Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs at Cal Maritime which means, um, just like it sounds, maybe that I oversee all of uh, the academic program. So um, I have um, been in administration for quite a few years, welcomed quite a few parents and new students over the years, served as a classroom uh, professor for many years prior to that. Um, and we're delighted that your student is going to be joining us. So um, I'm eager to, to pick up some of the questions and uh, concerns you might have. Uh, we'll allow my colleague now to introduce herself. 
Thank you. Well, hello, everyone. It's great to be with you this evening. Uh, I have only been here since June the 6th, so about six weeks. Uh, I've been in higher ed for 48 years, and it tells you that I absolutely love working with college students. It's my passion. And also working with families, parents, grandparents, um, foster parents, brothers and sisters. And I'm so glad we have this opportunity to meet with you tonight. I'm sure you might have a lot of questions. And I would love to acknowledge that there are probably some of you that may have already had a student that has gone off to college. Maybe this is your second or third or fourth uh, son or daughter that's going to college. But if this is your first, it's going to be a very unique experience. And uh, Lori and I both have had, had children that have gone to college. And um, so we've experienced some of the things that you might be experiencing. So our goal today is to really talk with you a little bit from the heart about some of the things we've experienced and to make sure that we can answer any questions that you have. So uh, I'm very happy to be here tonight and we're gonna start with Lori. Thank you both. Um, the first question uh, we have for you is, what does it mean for students to transition from high school or even if they've been attending a community college uh, to a, a four-year uh, college university like Cal Maritime? Okay, so it can mean a lot of things. And so I won't probably hit every mark here, but a few things to keep in mind um, that I've seen over the years. One is that your student is likely to be nervous about um, whether he, he or she can um, actually meet the mark of academic um, expectations. And so it, it, you want to reassure them that, um, first of all, you believe in them, right? That they, they are talented and that they can succeed, but also that um, at, at a four year institution um, like Cal Maritime, you have faculty who come here precisely because they want to work closely with their students. Um, that they they uh, want students to come to seek them out when they're struggling. They want to have that kind of mentoring relationship. So one of the things we've designed uh, in, in our orientation that your student will experience is for students early on to um, meet some of their first year faculty and to, to see them as fun, real people who are, are approachable, uh, helpful, kind, all of those things, right? Um, but that that also, um, but that, that doesn't negate perhaps the need for, for your student to understand that if they're struggling in coursework, um, there are many resources even outside of the faculty um, relationship. And, and we have um, a robust tutoring center. We have um, really great students and a well-run tutoring center. We have opportunities for them to, um, to, to learn in, in individualized ways ways um, that, that can help them. But they, they have to, one of the things you learn going from high school to um, college, as you may know, is that you have to learn to advocate for yourself a little bit more. Um, you may be struggling and no one's necessarily going to know it. it it's sometimes in college, the grades don't uh, come in quite as quickly as students would like. And so they don't always know where they stand and they get nervous. So if they feel like they're struggling, it's best for them to be proactive and to talk to their instructor about it. Um, and while I'm on the topic of grades, um, I want to just say also one thing I've noticed over the years, and I remember this with my own daughters, um, when your child is in high school, you become accustomed to seeing their grades posted almost daily, how they're doing in a certain class. And we, we sometimes find both new students and new parents <laughs> um, expecting to have that kind of um, access. And so you just need to know, as you might, you might already know, um, that does, that's not how it works in college. So, um, it, and it can be frustrating. It can be a little nerve wracking not to know exactly where you stand in any given week, but it's part of the adjustment. Um, and those uh, coming from a community college may already have experienced that, um, hard to tell depending on the college. So, um, so those are some of my pieces of advice about the academic transition. And I'm gonna let Beth pick up some of the other transitions, which are of course, um, um, it can be intense as well. Yes, uh, thank you, Lori. I also neglected to tell you a little bit about some of the areas that I work with. So I have most of the out-of-classroom experiences um, that we are certainly 
collaborating with academic affairs and the um, cadet development and leadership, leadership and development program. But we have the health center, the counseling center, we have opportunities for engagement in clubs and organizations, volunteerism. Uh, we have the dean of, dean of Cadets in our area and the Commandant's Office as well. And we have a wonderful Edwards Leadership Program that is both uh, within our area, but we're also working with the faculty to be able to offer some opportunities for leadership development in the classroom as well. Um, so a few things that I wanted to comment on is, my, in my experience, there are some incredibly gifted students that may have gotten all A's in high school or community college, and they are expecting that when they arrive in college that that will continue, and in many cases it certainly does, but I have a, a niece who is extraordinarily brilliant, and I remember when she got that first B, and it just shocked her. It was like she thought, oh, no, I'm not going to be able to do well in college. And luckily, we were able to help her understand that college is, uh, has a different level of rigor, a uh, different level of uh, reading uh, assignments. And we hope that people will achieve their best. But bees are pretty darn wonderful and not to feel like you are a failure if you receive one. I, I like to quote that saying that says perfection is the enemy of the good. Um, if people are seeking perfection, none of us are going to achieve that. And so if we could help um, to hone some of those expectations for students to do their very best and to seek help if they are struggling. Uh, I also think that the opportunity to live in a residence hall is very unique. Uh, you know, today, many students have their own bedroom. They've never had to share with another person. And now we're asking them to live with someone in a pretty small space. Um, we're asking them to share a, a community bathroom in some cases where I think they meet a lot of people when they're brushing their teeth. It's a great chance to meet people. But I have seen some students have expectations and when they walk in the room and they see someone who may look different from themselves, they hear music that's playing that's not their kind of music. Uh, they may come from a big city and, and our student is from a rural environment. Um, it may be kind of tough to think about how is everybody gonna get along. Uh, but I think um, if people could come in with an open mind that college is really about meeting people from all walks of life, from different backgrounds, and this is definitely a great learning experience. How do you share? How do you be respectful of each other? And students do have a contract, a roommate contract, that they go over to talk about expectations, and I hope that people will not the first day want to change roommates, and I hope that people will at least give it a few weeks and uh, learn to, to really enjoy every part of a different human being. Um, we will have different kinds of lifestyles, like some students, uh, cadets, like to stay up really late, and others like to go to bed really early. Some people need total quiet. Others like a loud, robust kind of an environment. So it's important to have your, um, your student really think about what it is to be a good roommate and to try and be respectful. I think that's probably the, the big commonality. Uh, I also think uh, with our counseling center, sometimes in some cultures, going to a counselor can be a little bit of a taboo. And what I would like to suggest is we are so fortunate to have really excellent counselors. And wow, you know, think about it. It's part of the experience being able to come and talk to a professional who's here to really listen to you. And if you're struggling, we want to make sure that people know that there are those there are people to help. Uh, I'd also mention that we even have a food pantry. So if there are students that are having food insecurity, we want to know about that. We want to be able to help with that. Uh, the dining program is going to be an all access program this year, which means they can eat pretty quite a few uh, portions. And we think that that's going to be really helpful. And uh, it's great. The convenience is wonderful. You don't have to cook. You don't have to shop. There's also a convenience store on campus. So there's quite a few things. Um, and I think the biggest thing is students need to learn um, that faculty in particular are not taboo. If, if students would take the risk of introducing themselves to their, their faculty, staying after, um, asking clarification, getting to know the faculty, 
uh, that would be that would help them go a long way towards having people that are going to be there to advocate for them academically. And I think that that is a big difference. Uh, you know, a lot of times in high school, you might know your teachers well, but when you get to college, you may be um, frightened to approach a faculty member. But, well, you know, they're human and they want you to be successful. And I encourage them to come and make themselves known as well. So those are a few ideas that I have. Thank you both uh, for that. Um, and if I, could, if I could follow up for just a moment. Here. Yes, of um, course. I was reminded when Beth was talking about her niece that I myself <laughs> remember as a first generation college attendee um, failing a math, um, a, an algebra and trig uh, test and thinking, well, that's just it. I'm one of those people not cut out for college. So um, I, I, get, I think I made it through okay, you know, and it's it just, you're, you have these, we, we like to look at the way you can grow from mistakes. And so the growth mindset is something we really want your student to, to take to heart. Um, and the other thing I want to say about faculty um, is Beth and I both talked about making yourself known to faculty is that faculty have, you may know this, something called office hours, which I learned some years ago of when a, a, I got to know a first year student who who mistakenly thought that that meant those were the office hours you weren't supposed to bug your faculty. <laughs> it's just the opposite. The faculty kind of set up those hours hoping that students will come by. They kind of compete for like, oh, well, I got three students show up today. So it really should be um, something that they you urge them to feel comfortable with. Thank you so much. Um, Shifting our, um, our transition from students to families and um, for those on our call who are parents, um, what's the transition for them? How is their role changing when their student leaves home to go to university? Well, for, it's going to be different from all of us, um, but in, in my case, I was the dean of students at Gonzaga University where both of my students, uh, my children were students, and so I was seeing them every day, and uh, it was very different for me as a relationship. I would have them and their friends over all the time, but many, many families um, are in a different city than their student, uh, and it's, it's really pretty traumatic for a lot of us to have that son or daughter that's been with us for 18 years or so, uh, and now they're going off and becoming independent and wanting to make their own decisions and sometimes not very communicative. Um, I, I tell this story uh, at new orientation to students and I encourage them, please, please check in with your family uh, that first week that you leave. My niece, um, same one, she went to the University of Florida and she did not contact my sister for weeks. And she, my, my sister was just dying because she uh, was in a whole different city. She was in Orlando and she's like, why isn't my daughter calling me? I, I'm just so stressed out because I don't know what's going on with her. So I encourage the, the students to try and set up the time, even if it's just maybe every Sunday to check in or just send a text to your family uh, but if you are the, the parents and you're not hearing, um, please know that that is sometimes happens to many folks. And it's not that you've done anything wrong. It's that a lot of times the students are exploring. They're in a whole different world. They're experiencing being away for the first time and they are asserting their independence. And so um, sometimes they just don't check in. But for me, that was really important to talk with my uh, my son and daughter, they lived in the residence halls and off campus. And so it was like, just all I have to hear is say, good night, mom. I don't need a whole litany, you know? So uh, I think communication is going to be something that's different. The other thing um, I find when talking with a lot of parents and uh, guardians is the first time uh, your student comes home might be like Thanksgiving. And they have gone through so many experiences and changes already from the day that you drop them off. And you're going to see some different kind of behaviors from them because they will have been living on their own, making decisions. And then they get home and you want to have a curfew. You want them to check in. You don't want them to go see their friends. You want them to spend time with your family. 
And my, my words of wisdom there is uh, just understand that they are coming back having had a whole lot more experiences. And I, I encourage uh, families to set some guidelines ahead of time because even if I have an adult son or daughter, if they're going to be out till one in the morning, all I just need to know is to let me know so I don't, I don't panic and call the police, <laughs> you know, so uh, I think if you have some conversations about, hey, we're so happy to have you back home, please just let us know if you're going to be out late, you know, and, and tell us how you're doing. Um, the other thing is academically, some uh, students are not going to necessarily want to share with you how they're doing. And as uh, the provost was saying, it's really difficult because we can't just tell you what their grades are. And that's got that's very hard for families who are like, I'm paying for the tuition. What do you what do you mean? I, you're not going to tell us. Um, but you just have to work it out with your student that they're going to have a communication with you. The other thing is uh, going to doctors, uh, doctor's appointments on campus at the student health services or counseling. Uh, I've had parents that told their son or daughter they had to bring their cell phone with them to the appointment and be on FaceTime so that they could attend their student's appointment with their doctor. And I just thought, oh, um, you know, there might be some reasons for that, but uh, this is the time that a student is really learning how to manage the world. And so, um, you know, I, I think you shouldn't necessarily go on their interviews when they're having an interview with an employee. Some parents I've had, well, I want to sit in on the interview. And I would encourage you not to do that because your uh, son or daughter might not be as successful interviewing if you're in the room. So those are just a couple things that I thought about. I'll, I'll jump in then. Um, I think um, boy, Beth actually covered a number of the things I would say as well. So I think a lot of years of experience we both have. I think there are a couple of things. The communication plan is important and I would add to that. Um, to, you know, and I can say this from experience, having had a daughter who was not sure she wanted to stay and um, had a lot of negative things to tell me about, about, well, I can't find anybody who's like me. I can't find any friends. You know, you, you know, your, your, your child better than, um, or your student who better than we do. And so when they're asking you those questions, you know, I, I would just encourage you to try to try to help them find something it's going right, you know, like, so, so tell me what's your favorite class so far. Um, so tell me what, you know, somebody you talked to today, um, something that, that you can ask that they have a specific answer to, as opposed to how's it going, how are, you know, you do want to ask those. And it, again, it depends on your child, but when you have somebody who's feeling homesick or feeling like this isn't the right place for them, um, we, you know, you sometimes have to help them get over that, that hump. Um, the other thing I would suggest is um, we don't, I don't know how Beth feels about this really, but I think we don't want you to encourage too many trips home um, because we really want them to, to create their, um, to bond with their community here on campus. So um, although, you know, you get, you gauge your own student according to your needs and their needs, but, um, but they really do need that time to connect with, with their new community. Um, so your your role is sort of as a, kind of a cheerleader on the sideline a lot of times, um, as as Beth said, when they come home for the first time, they're they're often far smarter than you are because of what they've been learning. Um, this is what I found with my daughters. Um, so you you know it's it's fun if you indulge them, but um, setting some of those guidelines and parameters is a great idea. I'll stop there. Benita, you're muted. Thank you both again. Um, I did uh, share a quick link uh, on FERPA in case families are interested in taking a quick peek at that. Um, my next prompt is um, talking a little bit about Cal Maritime, our mission, our beliefs, and our values, and mostly, most of all, our rigor on campus with our academics and extracurricular expectations is a little different um, from other universities. So especially for families who have had other students at other campuses, they might find out that we are not, um, we're a little different. So what would you share with uh, families and um, advice for their students with regard to our, our uh, curriculum and expectations? 
Okay, well, I'll start off with the, the curricular piece. Um, I don't know how many of you have students who are enrolling in one of our licensed programs, but um, if, if, that is, if that describes your student, um, there's a great deal of rigor that goes with those programs um, that, that is governed by, overseen by the U.S. Coast Guard. So we, we can't, you know, as our faculty are uh, sticklers for, um, for making sure their students acquire the skills they need to pass the the bar for pass the, the the requirements to get their license that's for those of you in those majors um but i think even even beyond that um the rigor here is uh, in the academic program it is one that um that really sort of marks um marks our reputation, right? We we have a reputation for producing um, graduates who are ready for careers, and we take that preparation, that need to prepare very seriously. Um, part of that is academic, and part of it is, as I think Beth will tell you, um, outside the classroom, it has to do with our, our um, uniform, belonging to the Corps of Cadets and the community standards that go with that, the behaviors that, that they're expected to abide by. Um, but but I think one thing I want to stress to you, and this in a way goes back to the last question as well, ways you can help sort of mentor your own student, um, attendance, right? Um, it, it, it's not something, it kind of goes back to the first question too. In high school, attendance might be taken, um, and, and it's an obvious um, case of people not going to their classes, but in college, when you don't go to class, it might be counting against your student and they may not even be realizing it, but our faculty expects students to be in class. So um, please be sure that um, your student understands that. I think it's their academic success hinges on being there and learning. Um, and it's also just part of um, kind of the overall expectation of showing up, being there. Uh, it, it has to do with looking out for each other in the community. Um, there, you can't just kind of uh, skate through Cal Maritime. You have to be present um, academically and, and otherwise. So. Thank you, Lori. I, I was when I wanted to speak a little bit to uh, this is a new experience for me. As I mentioned, I just arrived on June the 5th. And so I've met a number of cadets. I was on the ship, uh, as was our provost just recently to see what see what that experience was for the cadets as they were living on the ship for those that go out on cruise. Um, and the uniform is something that some people have to get used to. I, I wore uniforms for 12 years in, in my growing up year. And at the time, I remember going, well, I'm not so sure I like this uniform. And in retrospect, I think, wow, it's the great equalizer in many ways in terms of uh, socioeconomically. We're all looking the same. We're wearing professional clothing. Um, the Commandant's Office, which is part of our division, does a lot to try and mentor the cadets and hold them accountable. But there is a formation early in the morning. I think it's at 7.20 in the morning. I'm gonna try and make some of those. Uh, but that is about helping people to be organized, to plan ahead, to be on time and to learn those skills that are gonna be necessary once they graduate or are working um, in internships. They also have, uh, you know, a big value is about inclusion. And for me, this is really important to convey to all of you. Uh, we have a diverse population. We have people from all different backgrounds, walks of life, genders, sexual orientations. And we want to create the most inclusive and welcoming environment for everyone. And again, that respect is at the core of what we hope for each and every one of our cadets is to learn uh, yes, you're very different from me, but I, we share a lot in common. We're all part of the same um, university community, and we all are in a curriculum that is uh, very specific, and we need to learn how we can support each other and look out for each other. So for me, that's part of the mission and the, the, the belief system. Um, and I am a true believer that uh, people that in, get involved in clubs and organizations or athletics or in girls rec sports, it is a way to help round out the experience. Uh, academics is the most important piece, but you can miss out on so many wonderful 
opportunities if you don't seek some of these other things to experience. And also employment on campus. We have some job opportunities. So we hope that people will look into that. Uh, and finally, we also have some career opportunities. And one of the things that I discovered on the website is Cal Maritime has an excellent record of having uh, our cadets that graduate. And within a six month period of time, there's a large number like 94% of those cadets are getting wonderful job opportunities. So I think that Cal Maritime should be very proud of, um, of our cadets. There's also internships and those are wonderful experiences as well. There's an international cruise. Uh, I think the goal is to have a global perspective and not just a one from where we sit. So lots of great things at Maritime in my, in my opinion. Thank you, you guys are doing great. Um, I have one uh, last prompt for this evening. Um, could you share uh, the best possible ways that uh, families and parents can support their students during their journey uh, at Cal Maritime? Um, sometimes uh, it, it's tough to be on the sidelines and be at home and not know how they can. I mean, we, we touched on that a little bit before, but if there's any more uh, advice around that, that if you would share that. Uh, yes, for me, um, I, I will tell you, I like to talk to families about what is it gonna be like that day that you are in the heat, you're in the sun, you're packing all of your son or daughter's belongings, you're driving to campus, you're unloading, you're, you know, it can be stressful. Uh, it could also be joyful and exciting. It could be very sad for some families um, who are like, oh my gosh, this is a significant time in my uh, son or daughter's life. And, and what I've seen and I've experienced myself is, you know, you're going about your day and uh, all of a sudden your child snaps at you. And I, I remember being in my son's residence hall and all I said is, I said, oh, I think that poster might look great there. And he goes, I can decide myself, mother. <laughs> and I was checking into my college and my mother said, well, will my daughter um, be able to get linen here? And I remember going, why is my mother speaking on my behalf? And I stepped at her. And so I give advice that if you could bite your tongue that day, find forgiveness in your heart, Try and make it as stress-free as possible. Um, don't blow up if you possibly can. Last year, I was uh, at another campus in North Dakota, and I witnessed this father and son got so angry. They were in a shouting match in the dining hall. And I went up. Luckily, the son went to do something. And I said something to the dad. It's like, you know, I understand this is so stressful, but, you know, this might be a good time to just uh, find something some peace because if you're leaving today you don't want to you don't want to leave on that kind of a note so so and the other thing is um i remember almost 50 years ago when i went to um com campus i remember it vividly and i remember opening my bags after my parents left and my dad had bought me a hallmark card and tucked it away in my luggage and it meant so much to me, you know, and I still vividly recall that. So if I can remember 50 years ago what happened, you know, have a, a good memory and, and try and make it a really positive experience. Uh, the last thing is, is um, there are times when students really are struggling and they're going to need to um, talk with you. But if there is something that you observe with your student that you are sincerely worried about in terms of maybe mental health or some behavior that you're, you're like, oh my gosh, what, I need to talk to somebody. I hope you feel that you can reach out to our Dean and Cadets office, our counseling. They may not be able to give you information because of the Privacy Act, but you can provide information for us to kind of keep an eye out. And to do, um, we can do uh, checks on the student if we know that they're struggling. So please let us know and know we're here to help. I, uh, I'll add a few thoughts. Um, first, I guess um, we haven't said anything about to, right up to now about texting. And I know that um, many of us have, you know, students who have children who with whom we text fairly regularly. Um, 
it's probably a good thing to do to, to try to curb that a little bit. It kind of goes along with some of the other things that Beth and I have been saying where, you know, she said, bite your tongue if you can. Try, try not to um, sort of be on them every minute of the day as they, they kind of head into this next um, part of their journey. Um, they you don't you don't want to be hovering electronically digitally or or in real life right so so um i would say it kind of goes together with maybe the communication plan that beth suggested you set up like are, are you gonna it, i've seen i've seen parents and students who just text uh, non-stop all day and it's it doesn't help the student flourish so um keep that in mind as you think about about past years ongoing um habits you have around that and then the other thing is to echo what beth was saying about the, her father's card i was going to say um you know don't don't hesitate on that final day and maybe you all will do this anyway but remember to tell them you're proud of them you're proud of what they're doing and that you're there for them um that that means a lot in that moment even if they roll their eyes um and and also sort of the old-fashioned uh support in the form of cards I used to send my daughter, one of my daughters in particular, um, uh, care packages at certain times, like if I knew finals were starting. Um, and so there are little things you can do that are in addition to the other kind of moral support and um, letting them know that it can, sorry, I, don't, I had a loud vehicle go by my window, um, it, that it's okay to make, um, you know, not to have that straight A average that you still support them and you're still proud of them. Yeah, I'll stop there. If I may, could I um, add one more thing? <laughs> we on campus really rely on families and parents to be in be our partners. So when students come to you to solve their um, problems or issues or concerns, uh, put it back on them to say, who on campus have you spoken with? Can you go advocate for yourself? Find a solution. And um, I just, in my role, I'm always available to you. You can reach out to me and say, my students got this issue. Can you direct them? I, I, I might do that uh, without ever telling them that you texted me at 11 p.m. Um, never worry about that. Uh, but um, putting it back on them and helping them find a, a resource that could potentially help them uh, or letting one of us know so we could um, find a network that can that can support them um, instead of you wanting to solve the problem for them. So that would be the one thing that in all my interactions uh, with families or parents uh, and hopefully with you, um, that's the first thing, I, not the first thing. That's the last thing I say in my response to you. Like, yes, I can help. Yes, I will do whatever. Uh, but in the end, I say, please let them know that they need to contact so-and-so or you know, encourage them uh, to do the right thing. Um, Benita, I was going to ask, will you talk a little bit about the send-off parties and the uh, family weekend? Um, I can speak to family weekend, but um, to be honest with you, I, I could pull up the send-off days and share those days with you. I think it's August 5th uh, when multiple locations um, and I can I can share that on the Facebook page as well. Um, so what send off? Thank you, Beth, for pointing that out. Um, so various locations around California, we have um, alum who host uh, little gatherings where uh, they they invite students and their families to come get to know each other, get to know the alums that are in that location and give you um, a better idea of what their school experience has been, what the alums experience uh, has been and just provide an opportunity to mingle. So parents who might um, have students all in Los Angeles, if they get to know each other, maybe uh, they can book uh, flights at the same time so they can uh, take one Uber from campus to Oakland. And if one of them is driving, maybe they can carpool together. So for those kinds of connections between families, our alum are very engaged and they, they put on and host these send-offs, summer send-offs. I will find that information of where these are being held, but it is on August 5th. So hang tight, um, I'll share that with you. Um, but for now, thank you again, Beth, for, for mentioning that. Any other last um, 
words of wisdom from either of you? Cherish, cherish this as an incredible opportunity. It is a gift to get a college education and it is a whole family experience and their success is your success. And we know that you all had a lot to do with them getting to this point, but uh, this is just um, a very gratifying experience where they're going to get some skills. They're going to make lifelong friends. I hope they're going to engage, meet faculty and learn a lot about the world. So I, I hope it's a really positive experience for you and your family. And I'll just uh, echo Vanita's own uh, words about being partners. We are we are partners with you, um, with as as your uh, with your student as he or she goes through these next few years. So we think of ourselves as uh, being your partners as well. So um, don't ever hesitate to reach out. With that, um, I invite the the attendees or families to put any questions they have for Provost Schrader or for BP Helwig. Uh, I'll field those, and then, like I promised, uh, towards the end, oh, Corey, it's going to be okay. Um, uh, uh, towards the end, if someone needs to unmute and ask a question, we'll do that too. Um, but it's okay. We'll have lots of tissues for you at at uh, capping ceremony. Oh yes, uh, thank you, Heather. Uh, <laughs> we do host a um, welcome back for families to come uh, see their student uh, on campus, and uh, that is happening on October six and seven. And um, we will invite you for a reception on the sixth, which is a Friday around five thirty, and we will um, have our faculty there to meet with you and. Um, um, have a good time on our waterfront, watch the sunset together, and then you guys can uh, go out for a nice dinner with your student. And the next morning, uh, we will um, invite you back on campus uh, at the quad, and uh, we it's your time to be in formation that morning. Uh, we'll put you in formation. We'll have a t-shirt for you that you can don and look like you're in uniform, just like your students are in their khakis. Uh, we'll do a little formation uh, with you and then go have a good barbecue din uh, lunch and some activities after lunch, um, like going into the simulator and seeing what the simulation experience is like and maybe get on a boat. Not You won't be able to do all of those things. We'll create a schedule where you can pick one uh, item for you to do. We'll probably have an art project so you can make something with your student or by yourself um, and uh, may have a couple other things going on. Oh, I'm so sorry. We'll have a rugby game for you to watch. Um, so there will be a few items uh, on, on your schedule for that afternoon and we'll end the day at around 5.30 with a raffle. Um, and uh, again, thanking you for, for being there and thanking you for trusting us with your most precious, uh, you know, person in your life. Um, and then you guys can head out uh, for dinner um, with your student. And that will be the end of the, 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 the event, Keel Holler Family Weekend. We're calling it uh, Keel Holler Day this year because it's only Saturday. Um, so that's the schedule for October 6 and 7. Um, oh, Heather and Corey, no crying. Not yet. Uh, wait till, um, wait till <laughs> at least you're here and leaving them behind. Uh, we'll need to visit uh, some nanobiology. <laughs> sure. Uh, nuts and bolts question. Haircuts. Yes, there's a barber on campus. Uh, they have specific times they're inside uh, the residence hall so your student doesn't have to go far if they when they're ready for a haircut. Uh, we have a family trip scheduled that conflicts with send off day but we're planning to send our son to the event um, and then return to it. Yeah that's it it'll be a, a great uh, experience for your student. 
Um, it, it is fun for families to be there, for parents to be there. Like I said, it's it, good to connect with a parent or two so you can share some future planning. Um, but even sending the student to get to know the other um, cadets that they uh, will meet when they reach here on campus. So knowing one, one or two people ahead of time so you can find a familiar face is always very encouraging. Um, do they have a schedule uh, of off time breaks for the school? Also, is there a list of ideas or needs for what to purchase for their dorms? Um, we're going into uh, res life kind of questions. We'll hold off. Uh, Melinda and Tim uh, will be with you in a couple of weeks and they can really walk you through that. Uh, Provost, uh, would you like to mention anything about uh, breaks and uh, the academic calendar? I was going to suggest that you can go to um, the website and go to the registrar's page and you'll find the academic calendar. And so um, that should tell you um, a great deal about the breaks. Um, I'm, as far as when grades are posted, I don't know specifically how that rolls out, but it, it's um, it, it's shortly after the end of finals. So that will be, that information will be forthcoming. When do I get my class schedule and where would I view it? Because I need uh, need that for some scholarships. I am not entirely sure if you, you probably get your class schedule during orientation, I'm assuming. I don't know if, if uh, Beth or Vanita, if you know differently, but I'm gonna assume that there's, there's a day, there's a time period during orientation when you meet with your advisor. So that typically would be the time when you would find out your, your course schedule. Um, I hope that answers the question. May I? Provost yeah. also yeah. add to that. Um, all the students will be block registered um, and you will get some notification when that process is completed by the registrar's office. I also heard from another student who was looking for some um, paperwork or something for their scholarship and I directed them to reach out to our registrar. Uh, that email is registrar at csum.edu. Uh, please send them an email uh, with your request, and I am confident that you'll get something from them that will help you with completing your scholarship requirement. Um, is my son's... <laughs> yes, Alexa may join your son. Uh, <laughs> that's it's, that's it's a first... Scary. Time. Scary uh, <laughs> Siri is everywhere uh, also. Scary. Registrar at csum.edu for the scholarship question. We're at 622. And um, if anyone has been driving or has been unable to um, type in their question, please feel free to unmute and ask your question if there's anything in particular. Um, I have just shared um, the Facebook group. Uh, yes, I'm uh, old fashioned and still stuck in Facebook era. Um, there is a closed group for families uh, called Keelhaller Family. Uh, that's, the, um, uh, that's the link to it. I invite you, if you haven't already done so, please join the group. There are a couple of questions. It asks if you are, uh, please do, answer those questions. Without those questions, I do not approve um, the, the, the person, uh, invite them into the group. So please complete those questions. Uh, always know that you can reach me via uh, text or um, Facebook Messenger if you want to email me. Uh, here's my phone number. And uh, of course, you could find me on the website as well if you want my email. Um, we have a question from Joshua. Um, Provost, do you have an answer to Joshua's question about what is the final day for when transcripts are due? And uh, also if there's any 
issues with mail, emailing them, uh, emailing the, the transcript? I don't know the answer to that right now. I think that might, uh, I don't know if that's another question for the registrar um, or it might be through our admissions office. I'm not sure which person would be the more likely to respond to that. Um, I think the admission office is holding um, all of your documentation and we'll, we'll share that with the registrar's office. But I would, um, I don't know if you've been working with anyone in particular in admission, but you might also uh, write to, to that office to ask a question like this. So Joshua, um, feel free to also um, send an email to uh, orientation at csum.edu and I'll be happy to uh, find out who the best person is and forward your email to them for response. So don't uh, be shy about sending your questions to, um, to orientation at csum.edu. Can students change their roommate for a reason or another? Um, I want to say yes, but remember advocate, they need to advocate for themselves, find the right people, uh, and they'll be told who the right people are for almost every aspect of their student life. So encourage them to find a way to work it out or how to um, get that going. Again, very good question for uh, those experts from Res Life. So Corey, I, I, can, I, can, I can answer a little bit too. I uh, I'm not sure what the policy is here at Maritime, but in most cases, uh, I've worked with Housing and Best Life where they really uh, encourage you, as Benita said, to do your very best to work it out with the person. But if there is an extreme case where your student is really struggling and it's impacting their educational experience, uh, we have trained professionals that work in the residence halls that are there to help mediate situations. And we want people to get the help that they need to work through this. Um, but in a perfect world, they would at least give it a try. You know, they would not just walk in the room and go, oh, my gosh, I want out of here. Because I don't think we would support that. But if there's a serious problem that needs to be addressed, um, I'm sure the staff will be there to help. Um, Liza, um, if you just search for academic calendar on our csum.edu website, you'll see the um, times for Thanksgiving break. That should help. Um, generally speaking, uh, when you are booking flights for your students, be mindful that for them to get from, if they don't have a car, for them to get to Oakland Airport or San Francisco Airport, they have to either Uber, or actually I should start with, have a good friend who can carpool or give them a ride, that would be ideal. Uh, the other option would be for them to Uber. The third option is for them to Uber to a um, BART station, which is across the bridge from us. And um, I'm, I'm sorry to say that you want, if they're going to take BART from the station that's closest to campus, it's ideal for them to do it in daytime hours. It's it, uh, it's not the very, the safest location. So when you're booking flights, just keep in mind um, the students' options for getting to the airport and picking times that will get them to the BART station that takes them directly into both airports um, should be not late in the night or super early in the morning. It should be during daytime when it's well-frequented. So keep, please keep that in mind uh, if you're not going to be Ubering or finding a friend. I yeah. would add the Sacramento airport is not that far away. And I just flew out of Sacramento. It was very nice. It was very yes. manageable and not too far away either. Um, and if they don't have a car, getting to Sacramento airport can also be a challenge. It would take at least four hours to use public transportation to get there uh, if you don't have a car. Um, I just want to add about um, the, the the question seems to also be implying like when when will they be free from classes yes. and, and yes. the reference to the calendar is a good one. But I also just want to say that uh, typically your student will get a syllabus on the first day of class or one of the first days of class. 
And sometimes it becomes clearer on once you see the syllabus, what days um, there will actually be class. And, you know, our faculty are used to students who have to travel over the holidays. So there can be some flexibility there, but don't assume that they're going to be able to leave early. The classes will be, you know, class ended early or anything like that. Thank you for clarifying that, Provost. Um, where can I, Terry, uh, I wish I had an easy answer for that. Um, if you've submitted all your forms, your health forms, your uniform sizing form and uploaded your photo, if you've done all three of those things, um, I think you'll be good. If you haven't done it, it's on my things to do uh, by end of next week to reach out to specifically to students where one or more things are missing. So hang tight. And if you don't hear from me by the end of next week, that means you've done everything um, that you uh, were expected to do. But there isn't any place where you can just go and see green check marks. I'm so sorry. Um, so uniform collection will be uh, on the day you move in. Remember, you walk in, you check in, and you will be given a big tote box, and you'll go pick up your uniforms. Um, which when I was mentioning the bridge about BART station for, to the airport, I was reminded that um, I think an email, uh, an email is being sent to everyone either today or tomorrow with a uh, freeway closure. So Caltrans is closing down uh, freeways uh, through on, on weekends, July and August. And on the day that we are um, expecting you, August 20th, uh, a piece of the um, I-80 will be closed. So um, I've sent you the information that Caltrans has provided and um, I've included a link where you can check up-to-date um, updates and make your plans accordingly. I have faith in Google. Uh, it When you say I'm going to Cal Maritime on that day, it'll find you the detours and bring you over. So. Uh, but you'll have the link to, to check those things. And there is a Caltrans scheduled closure of I-80 near, near our campus. Um, parking permits, again, uh, an, a, later, um, a later session will cover that. I do not have all the details, so I don't want to just take a stab that might be inaccurate or not accurate anymore. So hang tight for that. Um, and if in the meantime, you have any, you know, you need to know something, please email me at orientation at csun.edu. Um, it's 6.32 and I wanna be very respectful of everyone's time. Um, so if there aren't any more questions, uh, I would like to um, thank both Provost Schrader and VP Helwig for their time and I want to thank all of you and I actually applaud you based on what um, Provo said earlier um, and also VP um, Helwig said earlier um, you deserve a, a round of applause for your unconditional support to your students and getting them here to this point so with that if there aren't any last words uh, Vanita, I thought there was a question about someone who applied to um, have a waiver for living on campus. Did you see that? Question? I did not. Um, and again, that's a great, thank you for catching that. Um, uh, that's a great question for uh, the day we have Res Life uh, speaking to the group. Um, they'll have the best information and all the details and the timelines for it. Thank you for catching that. I did miss it. I'm sorry. No worries. So with that, thank you again very much for being um, troopers to be on this call at this hour of the evening. I have a wonderful rest of the evening and we'll see you again on Tuesday. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Bye. Good night. <laughs> Good night. Bye. Good night.